Hi there guys, this is Simon from IV Audio, and in this video I'm going to be talking about phase alignment as it pertains to sample libraries and virtual instruments. Now you may have heard a bit about phase alignment in the past years. Uh, you may even have seen phase alignment listed on the specs for some contact libraries. So I'm just going to try to cover what phase alignment is, what problems it solves, uh, how to implement it a little bit, and why it isn't more widely implemented. So to start out, phase alignment is essentially a solution to the problem of phasing that occurs when cross-fading between two different samples. Typically, the way this technology will be implemented is when cross-fading between two sustains of different dynamic levels for the same note. So to start out, I've got two samples here, and we can use these to demonstrate some of the problem. Let's have a listen to the first sample here. and the second sample. Now you've probably noticed that these aren't actually two different dynamic levels, but they are two different round robins. So to simulate these being two different dynamic levels, let's just bring down the volume on this sample here. Now let's say that we wanted to allow the user to crossfade between these two samples using the mod wheel. We'll simulate that right now just by dropping one sample on top of the other. Uh, and you can sort of imagine that this would be the mod wheel at uh, 127, and this could be the mod wheel down at zero. First, I'm going to set these up so that it sounds bad to demonstrate the problem a little bit better. Let's go ahead and zoom in on these and align the two samples so that they are completely out of phase with each other. Let's take the peak of this sample and align it with the trough of this sample. And now if we drop this one on top of this one to simulate a crossfade, here's what we get. you probably noticed that we had some really bad phasing going on during this transition. And that's due to the fact that because there's subtle pitch variation in Claire's voice, even though she's a very good singer, she's got a very pure tone and very accurate pitch, humans aren't synthesizers and we aren't capable of singing completely pure straight tones. So because of those subtle pitch variations, the two samples come in and out of phase with each other as you overlap them, uh, which results in this irregular phasing, chorusing unpleasantness that you've probably actually noticed in some libraries because it's a pretty tough problem to work around. So how can we solve this problem? Well, we could attempt to line up the phases of these two samples like this, so that now the troughs and the valleys are aligned. But if we scroll through this file, you can see that over time, the peaks and valleys start to get out of sync with each other because of those natural pitch variations. So how do we tackle this? Well, we could tune both of these samples and just completely crush the pitch down to a completely flat and consistent pitch, which is what I've done over here. I took the two same samples as before and ran them through retune about three times. Retune is essentially the auto-tune equivalent inside of Reaper, uh, and just completely smashed the pitch. So if we just play these back at the same time, well, first let's line them up real quick. That looks like a peak right there. Yeah. And if we play these two back at the same time, you can barely even tell that it's two different samples. But of course, the problem is that now Claire sounds like a robot. Well, let's take our same example as before, and let's say that we wanted to do a crossfade, this time from quiet to loud. We can come in here, find a peak, line up that peak with another peak here, and drop this one on top of here. Now this is, once again, simulating our user moving the mod wheel from 0 up to 127. It's pretty hard to tell that that's even a crossfade between two totally different samples, because we've crushed the pitch so thoroughly that it removed all of the natural variation in her voice. So it's sort of an issue here. We've got a much smoother crossfade, but now she sounds like a robot. So how do we fix this? Well, the next step would be adding back in some of the natural variation and life in the sample. Typically, the way you see this implemented inside of Contact is by using an LFO to modulate the pitch and sometimes even the volume a little bit of the samples as they play along. This typically works better on instruments where what you'll be simulating is natural vibrato because vibrato tends to be 
you know, a lot easier to simulate with an LFO. However, with Claire in this situation, it's sort of random, very small variations, which are much more difficult to simulate using an LFO. So I don't really know how I would tackle this, and that's part of the reason that Claire Solo is not a phase aligned instrument. There is some technology out there that allows you to take an audio file, completely crush the pitch down to a consistent pitch, and also export the pitch variation over time into essentially an Excel spreadsheet. You could theoretically then take that information, the pitch over time, load it into contact, and in real time modulate the pitch of the sample playing back using change tune commands. Uh, I don't know of anybody who's done that. I don't know if it would work very well. It seems like it should theoretically be possible, but uh, haven't really experimented it with it too much. So I don't have a demo to show you. Sorry about that. But anyway, so this is typically what phase alignment will be referring to. It's extremely tuned samples, which have been aligned inside of contact with some variation typically added afterwards using an LFO. Uh, and the end result is that it allows you to have very, very smooth crossfades between different dynamic levels. The second main use case of phase alignment that I don't really know of having been used anywhere is for legato samples. With legato samples, we have a similar problem because with legato instruments, you are fading between several different audio files. Here, what I've got is a sustain. I have a legato sample, and I have a target note. So once again, we've got the same problem as before. If we have a look here, and let's just put this out of phase with the sustain, and drop it on top, and then we'll take this one and put it out of phase with the legato sample. If we play this back, we get some really weird phasing before and after the legato transition, which sounds extremely unnatural. And again, this is probably something that you've heard in lots of libraries before. Once again, it's a very tough problem to tackle. So typically what you'll see is libraries that use extremely short crossfades for their legato samples uh, to attempt to minimize the problem. But even then, you get a little bit of weird jumpiness. You get a little bit of weirdness in there. Uh, so once again, it would be really great if we could somehow ensure that our legato sample will play back perfectly in phase with the sustain. So let's go ahead and line that up now. We'll just do this, drop that on top of there. And now that these are in phase, we can actually extend out the transition pretty far, which typically longer transitions will sound more natural in general. So that to my ear sounds a whole lot more natural than the super duper phasey one. Uh, you know what, let's go ahead and extend this out even as far as we can go and see see what it sounds like. Let's see, how about something like that? You do hear some dips in volume and stuff because of the inconsistencies in the playing, but there's no real phasing going on. So why can't we implement this kind of thing inside of contact? Because this would be really incredible if we could do it. Well, the problem is when you're fading between two different dynamic levels, you play back the two samples for the two different dynamic levels at the exact same time, which ensures that they're in phase with each other. For instance, here we would, uh, if we line up the starts of these samples, I think I already, or rather these two over here. If we line up the starts of these samples and have a look at the peaks and, tr and valleys, yeah, those are pretty much in phase with each other. And since we're playing them back at the exact same time, we can ensure that they'll stay in phase with each other for the entire duration of their playback. The problem with legato samples is that you have no idea when this legato sample is going to be playing back. The user triggers when the legato sample plays, which is a problem, because it could be playing back here, it could be playing back here, it could be playing back here, it could be playing back way over here. We simply have no way of knowing what this audio file is going to be doing when we play back this legato sample. Now, you could theoretically imagine a way that we could track zero crossings inside of contact. You know, if contact gave us information about the actual sample level data, of course, I'm referring to the actual recorded individual audio samples here. Uh, you know, if we could if we could track zero crossings, we could probably come up with a way to ensure that this legato sample would only play back when the sustained sample was at a zero crossing. Unfortunately, contact doesn't give us a way to do that at all, uh, which is part of the reason why this hasn't really been implemented very widely. 
There is another way that we could achieve this kind of thing, similar to our sustain example over here, which is to completely crush the pitch of the sustain samples. Once you've completely crushed the pitch of the sustain samples, you could theoretically use the built-in contact timer uh, as well as information about this note, you would need to know the pitch of the note, and you would tell Contact to delay playback of the legato sample until this sample was at a zero crossing. Right now, because we have pitch variations in this sample, we have no way of knowing what position this audio sample is going to be at when we try to trigger the legato sample. However, if we crush the pitch, it's now playing back at a completely consistent rate, with the zero crossings happening at a consistent rate based on the frequency or pitch of the note. So if we know the pitch of the note, and we know that it is playing back at a single frequency, we can wait until the playback position of this sample is at a multiple of its period in order to ensure that we're at a zero crossing, assuming of course that the sample starts at a zero crossing. So essentially what you would do then is, let's say we're playing along this sustain, and suddenly we get to here, and the user tells contact to play legato transition to a different note. Well, if we played back that legato sample as soon as it was requested, it would be all out of phase and not sound too good. So instead what we would do is we would tell contact to wait until this position here, and then play back the legato sample. We would of course do a similar thing over here with the legato sample, and we would need to keep in mind the transition time, as well as some other things. It would be pretty complicated to implement, but you would essentially do the same thing. You would wait until this legato sample was at the same point as this sustain sample here, and that is when you would go ahead and fade over into the sustain sample. So as a recap, typically phase alignment refers to crushing the pitch on your sustain samples of all dynamic levels in order to achieve a very, very smooth transition between the different dynamic levels. Typically this results in a very robotic sound if there's no additional vibrato or pitch modulation applied on top of these samples inside of contact. The second use case, which in my mind is a little more interesting, is with regards to legato samples. Unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to implement inside of contact. I don't know of anybody who's done it. It might be out there. I'm not sure. So now some people might be wondering, uh, and I do get this question pretty frequently, which is, Simon, why the heck are you giving away all of this information? I'm not really giving away any information. This is all stuff that sample developers have thought about for a while. I'm just a young kid who happens to like this kind of thing, and there are people who've been working on this a lot longer than I have, who've probably thought about it a lot longer than I have. This is just my understanding of the problem and sort of my interpretation of how it might be able to be solved. Besides, there seems to be a little bit of confusion online about what phase alignment is and what the point is, so hopefully this video will clarify some of that. And of course, so what if I give somebody an idea of how to achieve phase alignment? That's fantastic. Competition is good. If you do figure out a way to do phase alignment for legato samples, I would of course love to hear about it and how you did it, but if you want to keep that a secret to yourself, that is totally fine and understandable as well. So I hope this video has been educational and somewhat entertaining, and as always, thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.